Yo, 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 we live on location out here in a hidden location in lovely Los Angeles, California. Today we got my main man, the young Thundercats. The Lou. Oh, oh, the Lou. St. Louis <laughs> representative in the building. Jordan representative. Jordan Brand representative. You know, a whole lot of other stuff too, but we just gonna say that first. You know what I'm saying? And we got him in the building representing the Boston Celtics. Gold medal bringing home this season, Jason Tatum, everybody. We appreciate you, bro, for letting man. us pull up, man. This appreciate is real you. nice yes, and luxurious and lovely. We chilling. Knuckleheads live on location, y'all. We back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's only right to move back up in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you took off. You know, you, you stepped up in the leadership role. How was that to be so young and um, start taking the leadership role? Kyrie getting hurt, and you you just kept the team in the playoffs, and you know, with your other team. And how was that to just start leading the team in the NBA at such, such a young age? That was that was my rookie year. Last time I was on. Yeah, you was yes, young babe in the woods. Yeah, barely saying anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it just happened so fast. Um, I think what I envisioned for myself when I was thinking about playing in the league was like, I don't want to just get there. I wanted to be the face. I wanted to be one of the best players. And my opportunity came a lot faster than, you know, it do for a lot of people, uh, especially on the biggest stage in the playoffs, playing for the Celtics. So, uh, you know, I was young. We all was young and we was all on rookie deals and we just felt like we ain't had nothing to lose. We were supposed to lose and we won the first round. We won the second round, and now we like, oh, we about to go to the championship. <laughs> so that that was probably the most fun I didn't have, honestly, since I've been in the league. Just me, a young JB, young Smart, young T. Rowe. You know, we had Mook, who was still proving himself. And we had some vets. We had Al and Baines. Um, but we just went out there like we ain't had nothing to lose every night. How did it feel like when – after you know Kyrie is gone, he departs from the team, and then you go into it, you knowing like you pretty much the guy. How how did you feel, and what was your perspective going into that season? Going into my third season, uh, you know we was coming off a a down year mm -hmm. where we lost in the second round. Uh, we had so many expectations and everything went south. Um, and for me, you know I felt like I felt like this was my last opportunity because I didn't make the I didn't make the All Star game my second year. And I was like, I like, I gotta make that next jump so I can be that that go-to guy, that star, like, you know, make that leap in my third year. So that was that was a big focus for me. Obviously getting back to winning. Um, we went to these conference finals, but you know, I went from, you know, fifteen a night to twenty four. Right. And I first time I made the all star game in all NBA. So, um, you know, that was that was a big off season for me going into my third year. How did that feel though, getting when you got selected as an all star? Like that's like the the stamp of approval, you know what I'm saying? You were you were right. Periods is like you won the one. Yeah, I mean, I re I remember the day I got that phone call, uh, cause that was probably the whole two three weeks before. I was just every game, if I had a bad game, I'm like, damn, I ain't gonna make it. <laughs> then I had a good game, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna make it. <laughs> so just to have that, like, all right, I, I I accomplished something that you know I always wanted to, and finally checked that off the off the list. Uh, that was a dream come true. Speak, speaking of that, like All Star man, you big for the Lou to see you and 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 Bradley on the All Star team together. Like, how was that? You know, that was like a surreal moment to see both of y'all with these All Star jerseys on from the Lou, same high school. Like, how was that for you? Yeah, I'm, it was tough. My first year, I made it. He didn't make he didn't it. Make he, it yeah. he was averaging Should've thirty two a game. Yeah. Yeah. Should have made. And he ain't make it. So my first All Star game, he wasn't there. But then last year. Um, well, this past season, we yeah. both started. Yeah. So, both st on start um, lineup, man, how dope is that? We was both starting. We was on the same team. It was the first time we ever been on the same team. Um, and just, to, I remember the picture we took with our all-star jerseys on, and I was just like, I remember riding home with him from school, you know, him dropping me off when I was 12. Yeah. And now we on the all-star team together. That was, that was amazing. How special was that to have? Because I remember seeing the pictures of y'all kids there too. Like, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? How special was that to, to not only be there with your boy, like you say, you remember riding to school with me now, y'all here doing it on this big stage, and y'all kids getting to be there together and witness all of this. Oh, uh, man, it's, I mean, I, everything happened for a reason. Um, and, you know, it's just incredible to see 
that, you know, someone took me under their wing. You know, now we playing against each other, you know, on the all-star team. And now we got kids around the same age and they getting to share that experience with us as well as together in our families. And, you know, being from the same neighborhood, um, you know, it's something that we only could dream about. Straight up, straight up. To Lou, Lou <laughs> how proud are you, you know, to be from a small town like St. Louis and, you know, all these guys from these big cities to uh, represent St. Louis and, you know, for the kids of St. Louis to see somebody else go and, and do the accomplishment. Like, man, like from Larry to us, to Jojo White, to Anthony Bonner, to all that, to y'all, now y'all making hundred million dollar, you know what I'm saying, contracts mm -hmm. to the next generation just gonna come behind that. How is that to just be from a small town like St. Louis? One thing about people from St. Louis and people always tell me, St. Louis got the most prideful people Ever. If you anybody from St. Louis and they go out of town, they gonna tell you where they from. They well, gonna let you know. know. They gonna put the hat on. I don't go out. I don't leave the city or go out the country or any state without my St. Louis. I took it to Vegas, Tokyo. When I, anywhere I go, I took it to Paris. I'm taking my St. Louis hat. I got it tatted on me more than once. Is you got you like it, it, I bought this in the airport in Orlando on our way out here. I, I, forgot I don't want to interrupt y'all nothing, so. but let me just break <laughs> news. Your, like I got all ID type right of white sides hat. I know all real. type of Chicago people that don't go hey. nowhere. Everybody, first we of all, do it, it, you, it's, it's more identical. Out. Like let them, it, you can, finish you can see it. <laughs> let them finish the, answer. Let them finish answer. No, nah. it's red stack that stand out. Like there's there's only one of them. Yeah, I I love Chicago, but like y'all got. White Sox, y'all got the Cubs. I don't know which one y'all want to wear. We putting that one on. I don't know it's the west side, north side, like what, what, what side y'all? It don't matter what side. You know Chicago when we in the house. Point blank period. We, I ain't oh, trying no, to say no, y'all no, ain't no. proud when so proud, but like, so we say it with our chest too. <laughs> let him finish answering My the bad, question, right. how proud he is to be from St. Louis. But it's different, y'all Y'all got Rock, y'all had MJ, D, like y'all just big city. Big city. You know what I'm saying? It's only 200, 300,000. You right, I forgot. Louis. We, I know we, we was making excuses team, and stuff. My Rock, you right, you right. I know we was making excuses. Go ahead, go ahead. Damn, we just a small yeah. city thing. You right, right. So when, you know what I'm saying, when somebody Something make it big, when somebody make it out, it's like everybody gravitate towards that. Everybody pulling for them. Everybody know who that person is. Yeah. It's cause it's like, we don't have many. So when we do, it's like, it's a real big deal. And you got an uh, obligation to come back to show the younger generation, like I played at Wolves, I played at yeah. this park, I've been to the pro am, like I did all the things you doing, so you can make it where I'm at. Or you don't have to be in the NBA, whatever you want to be, you can make it up out of St. Louis and yeah. you know be something special. And the support of the people is real, like the support of the people is real in the loo. Super you know, real. I'm, I, I love feel it. you. Respect that. Respect the to the Lou. All I was saying is that you know it's pretty real in Chicago too. That's <laughs> it. You know we love our peoples too. You played a, a, the play in game against Bradley. How was that? To, like, I'm gonna be honest. I ain't like the idea of the playoff. <laughs> I, I, I hated it. It was good for the fans. Like I'm sure the fans enjoyed it. Yeah. But at the same time, if I'm the seventh seed, somebody that's the tenth spot, you, you should not get a chance. If you lose two games, you go on. But if I'm the seventh seed and I lose two games and the tenth tenth seed get in, I'm sick. Do yeah. you hear me? I was yeah. doing, I was doing TV at the time. They asked me like, "What's your opinion of four play?" I say, "Man, listen. I say, if I'm a seventh or eighth team, I hate it. I say, if I'm a ninth, tenth, or eleventh, one of them teams trying to get, I say, I love it. I say, that's yeah. just the facts. <laughs> Shorten season." COVID, 72 games, maybe the ninth seed I could see for one year. I ain't rolling with the 10th seed. There's no, there's no way. Tell me this, speaking of COVID, because you you have spoke heavily about how it still impacted you long after. Like, how is is that all clear now? Or are you back good? Like, how long did it take for you? Because you told me, I remember when we was there, we talked in Windermere when you came to work out before mm -hmm. you left. You were saying that you had to take an inhaler and all that. So how long did it take for all that to clear up for you? I mean, I was I used an inhaler from the whatever time I started to our last game against Brooklyn. Mm, so that was two two months probably after two months after I recovered. Um, I ain't used it in USA. I feel fine now, um, but it was tough, you know, catching COVID. 
I was I had symptoms for one day. You know, I was sick and I was wasn't feeling well. But the the rest of the quarantine, I was fine. But when I got back to playing, I couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. Like I was, the game would start, they'd get the tip. We'd be on defense, and we'd come like I'd play defense for twenty four seconds. I'd come down, get the car, come off a pick and roll, and I remember I used to be like, damn. <laughs> like hold on, I can't even, I can't, I can't yeah. play basketball. Like it would take me like a whole half for my like lungs to open up. Dang. And like I, I like I remember the first month I came back, you know my numbers was low. I was only averaging like 22, 23. But and like you know the media they don't understand, but mm. they was all on my ass. But like it was real. I couldn't like I couldn't breathe. I was I just felt different. My body felt different. Did you notice it right right away, or was it like a gradual thing? Like what the hell going on with me? Or did you think like I need to work my way into it? Or did you think it was like that right right away? I so like the first week because when you in quarantine they tell you not to work out. So I was out of right. shape when I came back. Yeah, so that's I, what I mean. Like so I played like three games and I was I was gassed. And I was just like, man, I, I just need to keep playing a little bit That's more. That's what I was saying. You think it was like And that. the second week, it was always like, in the first half, first quarter, like I couldn't like, like go back and forth, back and forth without being like, hold on, I need, like I used to be like, bro, I need to come out the game. Like, and I never, I never want to come out right. the game. <laughs> right. But it would be two minutes into the game. And I, I vividly remember one time at home, coming off a pick and roll, trying to go and be like, Hold on, like just backing the ball up, like damn, I can't. Let me kick the ball. Like I can't play like this. Like it was affecting how I played. You experienced the bubble too. How was the bubble? The bubble was the bubble was cool, actually. Like thinking back on it, I don't know if I'd do it again. But <laughs> <laughs> like you, you don't want to. But. I don't want to do that again. But the NBA did a hell of a job. Like just with that being the first time for everything and having all the teams there and all the personnel, like we was safe. And after like after two or three weeks when like we got our routine down and everything, the bubble was cool. Shout out Disney, I was in the yeah, happiest like, place on earth, kicking it. Chilling, we, I was out there playing golf in Orlando <laughs> five times fishing. a week. I was watching all that, like they yeah. fishing, man, they, they kicking it. And like, it was like the safest place in the world at the time from COVID, we yeah. was like, we was chilling, the bubble was cool. I remember the first time you grew your hair out, you you started back not playing where you was like, damn this, let me get rid of this. Like, like so that. it's safe to say now that you 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 confident is not is not the dude. Not you the can hurt. do what you want to do what you do and still get busy. Cause I, I seen you come back. I saw he coming back with the curls. He ain't tripping no more. But I remember the first time you got rid of him. So now you confident that, that it ain't the hair. It ain't the hair. It's, it might is it the kicks or is it the hair? During quarantine, I grew my hair out. Nobody was getting a haircut. So I go to the bubble, I got curls. I never <laughs> I, I never grew my hair out of my life. I always had a low cut. And this is like your pop star. This is when I play your pops mm, in college, this is yeah, how he yeah, looking. Yeah, you remember yeah, Big Tatum yeah, swole yeah. out that <laughs> boy with the So we the we was like the first game of the restart and we played Milwaukee. I was two for eighteen. <laughs> Damn. I couldn't buy a basket. That's the iron unkind. <laughs> I went back and my trainer, Nick. He, uh, uh, my, my PT, he, we was like, we had a joining room. His room was right next to mine. And he cut his own hair. <laughs> like, that's how desperate I was. There you go for the real. That's how desperate nah, this I was. gotta go. I, <laughs> we play like every, we play every other day. So the next day at the practice, I knock on like, yo, Nick, <laughs> I'm gonna cut this shit off. <laughs> he like, you for real? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yo, I, I can't. <laughs> so he, he cut all my hair out in in the bathroom at the, at the hotel, and I we played Portland the next day. I had thirty six. Hey like, man, right. let's see. I'm saying shout out to Nick for coming through in the clutch, boy. Thirty six piece. But then I cut I, Caesar. I grew my hair back out, and I was like, man, I'm 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 cool. Like, I, ain't, <laughs> I ain't superstitious no more. And I played the season, and I kept the curl. Throw it up. So that means, do you change your meal up? You gotta eat the same meal. Uh, no, nah, I ain't. I ain't on that no more. <laughs> I ain't, let it go. We gotta go out there and hoop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Since we left you, when you first came on, you were you were not a member of Jordan Brand yet. Yeah. No, I wasn't. Yeah. Tell me, tell me how that how that love feel? How that feel when you uh, got that call? Like, yes, MJ wants <laughs> you be part of the, the, the special goat, task man. force. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then when you get those those packages, boy. You know what I'm saying? I know how that feels. <laughs> All the way down to the socks and drawers, man. <laughs> sure. It was uh 
it was towards the end of my second year. We was in the playoffs and I was making that transition. Um, and you know, to get on Jordan Brand's team, you gotta get the final say so, gotta go through MJ himself. So yeah. to be on Jordan Brand, he gotta personally want you to be over there. So for the greatest player of all time to, you know, seek you out and want him to be a part of your brand. And when I finally got to meet him for the first time, it was just like, <laughs> I ain't like, he's just a real person. Yeah. But yeah, it was, I'm, then all the packages, we get all the shoes, 10 months in advance. You went on the Paris advance. trip. That was your first trip? Yeah, the that's first, the first time I That was your first trip being, and being in Paris. I know it was stupid. I remember right? when Jeff told me that you was about to be there, I said, oh. I, I know it was stupid though. That. How was that experience? That was, it was, it was cool. Uh, MJ was there, yeah. uh, Russ, Blake Griffin, Melo. Maya Moore. Maya Moore. Uh, we was all there together. Yeah. Uh, Spike Lee was there. Yeah, I remember that. Everybody was there and we was there for about a week. Uh, we had a great time. Yeah. How dope is it to like, this is still on your little St. Louis stuff. How dope is it for you to, you know, now you've been, you are kind of like an OG vet and now your boy, your big bro, B. Bill get welcomed to the squad and brought in. Yeah, I, you I, know. <laughs> and now you feel well, like you know, now y'all joy, really you know? repping the Lou in a real way, <laughs> part of that special task force, you know what I'm saying? And now he getting the same love you feeling. Yeah, I mean, you gotta keep it in the family. Uh, it was funny, it was my my third season, we played we played the Wizards at home, and uh, one of the reps for Jordan, he came to the game, and after the game, you know, anytime that I stayed a night in DC or he stayed in Boston, like we go out to eat or something. And all three of us went out to eat. He still was with Nike. Yeah. And, you know, I remember a couple months later, he was like, yo, the, the rep called me. He was like, how you feel about, you know, we brought Brad to the team? I was like, for sure, of course. So, um, and, you know, we figured it out. Nah, it's not. we on. We on. <laughs> you know, we on down there in the Lou. I don't know if you know about it, but hey, we on. But the uh, USA team this summer, like, uh, how was that experience? You know, you, you with the elite, you know, you, you finna go and get a gold medal. This is what we all, the process of everybody, you know, who play basketball, mm -hmm. you know, you want the gold medal, you want the championship, you want all that. How was that to be on the team with like KD and some of your peers and go over there and win it when people was doubting? Yeah, uh, it, was a, it was a long journey, it was tough. Um, we started in Vegas. We only had nine players because we had Book, K Mid, and Drew. They was in the finals. Yeah. And then Brad was supposed to be on the team. He had got COVID, mm -hmm. so then we had to replace him. Um, I mean, in the season, the season was still going on. So a lot of us had just come off the playoffs. So we was relaxing mm -hmm. with our family. Nobody was in the gym yeah. like that. So we was we was a little out of shape. Yeah. So then you got to get in shape in the summertime. Then we got exhibition games, and it's our first time playing with each other. And everybody trying to be comfortable and like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to step on his toes. Don't I don't step want to each other's toes. So we we lost a couple games in Vegas and then we lost our first game in, against France. And I remember we had like a like a, a team meeting with the players uh, after the game. And we was like, man, listen, we ain't come all this way. We didn't sacrifice time for my family not to win the gold. And we got the most talented players in the world on right. one team and we not being ourselves. Like, yeah, we, we got all, we was like, we got a bunch of guys that know how to play the game, but what got us here is being ourselves. So we had mm -hmm. to figure out like, we still gotta be ourselves and play our game and just, you know, figure it out as we go. We was all trying to be like, you know. Passive. Pat, too passive, not being aggressive. And that's why that's why we lost the first game in the games before, cause we just, and once, once we figured it out and it was over after that. Go time. Tell me how, how it is and from inside the locker room, because I mean it was obvious after you guys won that you, you know, that that that, that you heard some of the outside noise. Like tell me how that is when you like you say, you navigating that whole process when you know everybody on this squad is a killer in their own right, but y'all trying to figure that out. You seen all these crazy stories come out and so for y'all to be navigating through that within that process and how how much tougher does that make it? Yeah, it it is and it, it was also like we was in we was 13 hours ahead from the East Coast, so couldn't bring our family, our kids. So we was just we was isolated. Mm -hmm. We was we was together, and we had it was like the days was long. So when we up, everybody back home sleep, so it's nobody to talk to. And then when we <laughs> going to sleep, everybody waking up. 
So all we had was each other. So we in a lounge every night, talking, playing cards, watching games, like we was just chilling. And I mean, we got social media, we seen what everybody was saying. And we was like, man, we gotta figure it out. Like book came in and drew like y'all ain't two days after the finals come all the way over here for nothing. Like we ain't sacrificed our time for my family for no reason. Like we gotta figure it out. And we was all on board, we was on the same page. And man, when we won, I mean, y'all seen the pictures, we was in there with champagne. <laughs> it Turn. was like, it was a hell of a feeling. Well, how is it to have that gold medal in your hands, man? Taking it home and bringing it home to your mama. Repping like MJ you know, and, and, and for the Kobe city, man. and all these people before y'all. It was. It Cause was you a, won it on a younger level before, but it's, you know, on that national team, this is That's the that whole, big, big boy gold medal. That's yeah, <laughs> I, I play USA. I played USA three times in high school. And, yeah. and when you're in that program, the, the end goal is to get on the national yeah, team. Yeah, definitely is. I mean, so I remember being 15 and, and, and winning my first gold medal. And everybody on the team, when we 15, like, man, I can't wait till we get to the to yeah. the national level. But it's like, it's it's, it's really hard. Yeah. So to, to make it to the national level and be on the, the Olympic team and, and finally get it is, 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 is really heavy. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's way heavier than I thought. And I remember like just taking it home to my mom and she was like, she got teary eyed. She was like, man, you, like my son is a gold medalist. Straight like up. saying that and me, like, I didn't realize how big of a deal it was till we won. Yeah. I'm like, hold on. I went to the Olympics. I'm only Straight 20, up, like bro. I won that's a gold a, medal. That's, yeah, that's, that's amazing. Like it was like, it was a big deal that we won. How is it to, to hear that Coach K is about to retire? Uh, like Coach A is Duke. All we've been knowing mm -hmm. is Duke and Coach crazy. K. To hear he's finna retire and not be coaching that Duke no more. How's honestly? Yeah. I mean, he was he turned 70, 71 when I was in school, so he gotta be seventy five. Excuse me. I know. I remember when when I seen that Roy Williams retired. I kind of clicked on me like, all right, Coach, he he gotta be on his way soon. Yeah, um, but. It's like you said, all, all I've ever known, all we ever known is Duke. Um, and I'm just honored that I had the privilege of being able to play for him for one year and still talk to him all the time. I got FaceTime from him <laughs> when I after I won a gold medal. Uh, so me and Coach, we talk all the time. Um, I love him to death. And, uh, you know, hopefully he go out on top this year. Yeah. Did you get a FaceTime from Tom Brady too? We was uh. I we, saw everybody get Tom Brady <laughs> FaceTimes after the gold medal. Did you holler at the Tom terrific? I I, I know Tom. Oh, no <laughs> Hold up, y'all. You feel me? That's how you know he on another from level. Day, look, 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 right no, no, no. We know each other. We tight like that. Like uh, me, me and Tom talk from time to time. Uh, I went up to see them practice when he was back on the Patriots. So we, I mean, we was on the bus. We was we just got our gold medal and. Uh, Draymond called him. Draymond was in the back, so I was like ten rows ahead of him, and uh, I remember like Book and Zach and all of them said what's up to him. Uh, I was I thought about it, but I was I, I might have been on the phone or something. But I was like I I talked I text talk him to him later. Yeah, I, I talked to him later. See, this is this is the St. Louis thing right here because I can hey, see Miles man. would do that. I can hey, see Book. Louis, you well I can known, see Book man. doing you that. Worldwide, man. He would do that and like look, this, that's that's crazy. Hey, you from the Lou, you worldwide. Tom, baby, Tom you know? my guy. So I talked to him. Tell me about these fifty balls. You know what I'm saying? You didn't pass Larry Legend with fifty burgers in the within the Celtics uniform, and, and, and you still a young boy in the game. Just tell me about. You know what I'm saying? This scoring prowess and how you become, you know what I'm saying, so confident in, in your skill set and what you do. I mean, I know the work you put in, but I'm just saying, just watching you grow from year to year, just tell me how you've gotten this confident. Yeah, I think the first, I remember the first time I scored 50, I had 53 against uh, the Timberwolves at home um, and we won in overtime. And uh, I had, 60 against the Spurs. I had 50 against the Wizards in the playoff game. Yeah. I had 50 against Brooklyn in game three. I remember it was after the second one. After When I scored 60, one of my homeboys called me. He called me the next day. He was like, yo, he was like, like you really 23 and you scoring 50 and 60. <laughs> he was like, I just want to know like what go through your mind? Like, how do you do it? Yeah. And I was like, honestly, I, I always had a mentality Whatever, like if you do something once, you can always do it again. So once you get over that hump, when I scored 53 against Minnesota, like you figure it out, like, all right, 
I hit, I get to the line 15, 17 times. Mm -hmm. You get your rhythm. You get some easy layups, back cut. Mm -hmm. Not a, the rim big. You coming off step ups. You shooting side step threes. Like I just, I like I know I can score fifty, so I know I can do it again. Mm -hmm. I know I can score sixty, so I know I can do it again. Like that's just the mindset I have. Like once you do something once, you can do it again. Yeah, you playing chess with the game, man. It's like it's you playing a game in your mind, and then. Got nothing to do with anybody mm -hmm. else. Well, what goes through your mind when you look up and they say that you've already you you, you were Larry Bird? <laughs> like, come on, bro. Larry, you ain't twenty five yet, and they talking about you with Larry Legend, and you got so much longer and so much more to go and work to do and all of this, but you already right there with with somebody this 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 all time legendary greatness. Yeah. Uh I I remember when they said I tied the the scoring record with Larry after the game. I remember tweeting it, <laughs> <laughs> like for real. I think I think I, when you're young and you in the moment, it's like it don't really resonate like how special that that is. And obviously, Larry being one of the top ten greatest players of all time, and just to be with anything you do be mentioned in the same category with him is like you know you're doing something special. Um, I just look at it. As you know, I'm I'm 23. I got so much more to to accomplish. So much more I want to do. I don't necessarily take the time to be like, man, like I got the same record as Larry. It's like I I gotta beat it. Like when I get done, then you can sit back and be like, all right, I I did a lot. But you know, right now, it's like, no, nah, you got longer. you got that that window to maximize your your ability and your potential. So I'm just trying to figure it out. I want to speak on like your pops and Larry. What was some of the things that Big Tad, your, your your pops and, and and Larry when you was coming up that you seen like some of them trips to Cleveland when Larry was playing and some of the stuff that you seen coming up that was motivation. Like man, I wanna wanna get there because you seeing stuff from your pops and Larry that the average kid wouldn't get the opportunity to see. You walking through the locker rooms, through the back, mm -hmm. or sitting with the family and being at games. What are some of the things that you seen early on that was like, man, that was motivation for me to get? I mean, honestly, I, I just remember like being back home and going to the Bonner League, like the pro end games on the weekend. Like if you came yeah. or if Larry came, and I remember just pulling up and seeing a Bentley outside <laughs> yeah. or seeing an all black Phantom and just being like, I never seen this in person. Our bug definitely had an exquisite yeah, whip. Yeah. Had whip. So just seeing like what he did and how he got there and like, I don't, that's not what it's about, but at, at 10 years old, oh, he got a phantom. It's like, all right, I need to do what he did to get one of them. Yeah. But I, my, my pops was, he he was the one who put the ball in my hand uh, from as early as I can remember. Yeah. Um, and, you know, from three to I was 14, you know, he was my coach, the person I worked out with yeah. um, and, and taught me everything I know, you know, about the game, especially at that age. Um, and he never, he never like, we never really talked about the NBA like I did. I used mm -hmm. to watch Kobe and Paul Pierce and all them and be like, man, I can't wait till I get there. And he used to be like, hold on, like, you gotta get to high yeah. school first. You gotta hopefully get a scholarship. Yeah. I was like, Scott, like, I'm going to the league. And he used to just be like, listen, it ain't, it's, it's not easy, like, nothing guaranteed. Yeah. So he never, we, me and him never really talked about the NBA till I got to like, Probably my junior senior year was like, you know, if I don't get hurt or something, if I don't get in trouble, you know, I'm gonna make it. Mm -hmm. So he was just always like, man, just worry about going to college for free. I like that, Tad. So that, yeah, he never, we never talked about the NBA. He was just like, just see if you can get to college. What motivates you now? What do you be seeing in the league that motivates you to be, man, I still wanna be one of the best, not only the best player, one of the best player, but, you know, the best player, you know? Uh, what motivates me? Uh, I think it's a lot, honestly. <laughs> uh, I think my son, first of, first of all, just trying to be somebody that you know he he'd be proud of. Like you know, I, him, I think about all the time when he get old enough and he go to school and he tell all his friends like who his daddy is. Like I think that right should up. be cool. Oh, that's the dopest thing. Ever. And just seeing him at, when he come to like. When he sit courtside at the games, 
and like seeing the pictures and after the game, when I scored 60, he ran out on the court. I hype you, baby. Like, no, I love that. Like, I <laughs> yeah, love to be able to see y'all relationship and how you have him everywhere and how he love to be everywhere up under you and in it. And even though he don't really understand it, like you say, when he look back, it's going to be unbelievable. Yeah, it, it's, it's no better feeling than that. And then the, I think the second part is like being young enough to like, I still – play against some of the best players as some of the guys that I looked up to. So mm -hmm. like all the guys, most of the guys I looked up to, I'll get to play against them now. And it's a lot of instances where, especially like my third season, especially last year, where like I have people I looked up to and it's like, hold on, we like, we going at it. And, and I think like playing USA basketball really helps out with that, like playing against Best KD yeah. every day and practicing and seeing how he prepared and you know he's like one of the, what what is that like? He wanted he he wanted the best player ever ever like <laughs> yeah. I, that's what I'm saying like what is it like when you when you get picked to a team and you walk in there and you got KD right there, Dane right there, Book right there. Bam, all these different dudes and it's like like you say when you looking at KD that's one of the greatest ever. What is it like to watch him? Yeah, KD, seven feet tall. He <laughs> shoot over the top of everybody. He is, you know, smooth and is fluid. And I played it like we went at it in the in the playoffs for five games. And I was yeah, like, I, I was. I remember during the play-in game, after the play-in game, we like we won, but then it was also like, damn, we got Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! But that, in hindsight, like that's what I wanted. I wanted because. Those are the those were the matchups that people remember playing against LeBron in the playoffs, playing against KD, you know, five games in a row. And yeah, I mean, yeah, we came up short, but you know, showing like you know, I I belong out here. And then just competing against him with Team USA and being on the same team and having those talks with him of him coming to me during the game, like, yo, take over, keep going, like, don't look for nobody when you get it, go to work. Like him telling me he's a fan. He like seeing me go to work was just like, damn, like this is somebody I looked up to and we on the same team and he telling me like, you know, don't pass the ball, go to, go get a bucket. I yeah. saw he said when he was asked, you know, he broke, he, he became the all time leading scorer for the USA team. They said, who you think next? He said, you like, oh, how did that feel to have somebody who's arguably the greatest scorer ever to say that you next to do that? Uh, that was, I mean, I meant a lot uh, and I think what I've realized is by earning, the, like to earn the respect of people like him and Bron, like when you play him, you gotta go at him. Mm -hmm. Like I I took that that mindset when we played him in the playoffs of like, to earn the respect of somebody like him, like you gotta, you gotta go at him. That's like, that's the only way he gonna be like, all right, you know, youngin' up next. And, you know, I, I felt that way after we played him in the playoffs and and, um, you know, just playing with each other and against each other in practice at USA, I just know, like, that's how you, you know, show respect and get respect of, like, you know, not taking it easy because of who they are. It's just like, no, I got to go at you. That's yeah. what I, that's what, like, so, so when you leave that series, walking away from, like you said, y'all came up short, but to a man, you, you, you know what I'm saying, you did what you could do and, and like you say, you went at them. How do you walk away from that feeling? You know, like you, you know, like you say, y'all lost, you gotta go get better and the team gotta improve, but you fought and you, you showed, you showed a lot. Yeah, I think from every time you lose, it's a lot to learn from. It's small little wins or lessons that you can take. And um, I just, I felt like, you know, obviously we, we had nothing to lose, you know, everybody expected them to win and go all the way. So, um, you know, let's take it one game at a time. Let's make it tough for them. And, and we tried, um, you know, we we won game three, I had 50 and game four, I had 40 something, but we lost. Um, but just knowing that Katie and, and James and, and Kyrie was out there and, you know, them three are the best players in the world. Yeah. And, you know, regardless how old I am, I want to go out there and say, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm up there with y'all. I saw that they all had moments with you. What were they? What what was that like? The the little moments y'all shared between each other after the after the series was over. Yeah, uh, I mean I've played with Kai. I known KD forever and, and James. And I mean you know after the playoffs, you know you show the respect. You know you've been pushing and shoving somebody <laughs> five to seven games straight. Uh, so just those you know those are the special moments that you know a lot of people don't get. 
you know, until you get to that that level in the playoffs and stuff like that. Do you uh I know with Instagram and stuff, I'm starting to see a lot of stuff on Instagram. In your Instagram, do they send you the LeBron dunk on every day? <laughs> they said that every day. That's too, definitely gonna end. Yeah, I I see I see the dunk at least. <laughs> If not every if not every day, I see it every other day every since other it's happened. Day. Whether it's Twitter <laughs> or on Instagram, I always see it somewhere yeah, on my that social is media. That's crazy, but they'll never let nothing die down. Tell me how excited are you to see Kemba get to go home to the Knicks and be, you know, in that atmosphere and just to know him being a kid from from you know Mount Vernon in New York and that whole atmosphere, what he did it when he went to UConn and every time he came to the Garden, mm-hmm. and how special that place is to him. How do you how how happy are you to see him get home? Uh, I mean it's too far. I ain't want him to leave. Right. That's like that's the first part. Kimber, that's my man. Like I, I love Kimber to death. Coolest dude ever. Uh, you know, great great teammate. One of the best personalities, like he always smiling. Like everybody know Kimba just always happy. Jordan uh, Brand representer. Mm-hmm. So to see him leave, uh, but for him to be able to go back home. Right. And I'm sure him being a kid, always dreaming about being from the Bronx to playing you know, in the Madison Square Garden. Uh, I, I couldn't be happier for him. We play him. We play him the first game of the season <laughs> at MSG. So. Uh, to see, get to see my boy then, but no, I'm, I'm happy for him and his family get to be there. Uh, I know he got everybody gonna want tickets, <laughs> tickets to the game, but no, I, I couldn't be happier for him. How was it for you playing in MSG? Like you know, what I'm saying everybody say that's the mecca and that's the place. Like how does that? Like how do you feel when you get to go there? Like how that? How does that? Like that's that's a special special vibe. Like how does it impact you? Because I know you play at home. And Boston Garden every day with that, but how does that that Nick Garden feel? Since I was in college, that was my favorite place to play. I had uh, uh-huh. I had hurt my foot in college, so I missed the first twelve games. So my first game back, we played it in Cameron, and I, I played like twenty minutes on a minute restriction. But the, the the game, the first game I played like four minutes, um, was like my coming out party. We played Florida at MSG. I remember Kyrie was was a uh, court side and I had like 27 or something. And ever since then, for the most part, I always get busy when I get, when I play in MSG. It's just like, there's no better place to play in my eyes. Well, that's, that's good for a Celtics player cause they in y'all conference. Mm-hmm. So you always gotta get busy up in there. Tell me about your relationship with, with Jalen Brown and how, how that's grown. Because you know, early on, they was like, oh, they gotta split these guys up. They so similar, they this and they that, but like, you guys have proven that not only can y'all play together and exist together, but y'all could be, you know, stars together and, and and thrive together. So tell me about how that relationship has grown over the years. It's been great. Um, two guys that got drafted back to back to the same team, same, you know, draft number. And every day, every day, every day, every game, you know, I know where I'm trying to get to. He know where he's trying to get to, and we trying to figure out together. But it's in a way we we pushing each other. Mm-hmm. Like it had been times where he didn't done, done some in a game, and it's not like. And I'm thinking like, damn, like I need. Like, I'm trying to do that, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's been things right. I didn't did where he didn't told me like, yo, like so like we all, we we everything we do we compete in a, like in a good way. Like I'm pushing him. We playing one on one after practice, and. We, I think the next step for us is like even feeding off each other more in the game. Mm. Uh, but, you know, JB is from where he started his first year and, and what they tried to label him is just like, you know, he couldn't shoot or whatever. And, you know, he shot I don't know, 38, 40% from the three and made his first all star game. Yeah. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't have been happier for him. And, you know, obviously he hurt his wrist, so he didn't play in the playoffs. But, you know, I think. Especially going into this season, you know, people talking about all the trades that other teams made and, you know, what are we going to do? Um, I think, you know, honestly, I, me and him kind of take the same approach of like, you know, I'm getting better and he getting better. It's not like we stand the same. No, no, so, no. you know, we 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 two of the hungriest players in the league. We, we still try and get there. Tell me about like like you spoke about going into the new season. Right. So I had the pleasure of of. of 
your new coach, Ime Udoka. That was my teammate. Oh, Ime. <laughs> two two different stints. I played with Ime I and played Ime with in the Portland. Clippers, mm -hmm. and I played with him in New York for uh, I don't know. It both of them was a couple of little short stints, but Ime and his sister went to college with me. His sister mm. played on the women's team in DePaul. So shout out to Umfan, but. <laughs> He's one of the greatest, like, just individuals that mm -hmm. you'll ever, you know what I'm saying, encounter and just classy stand-up guys. And I know what he's going to bring to the table. Just tell me what you think of him, how excited are you to move forward with him as your new coach? Yeah. Uh, I met Ime 2019. He was on the Spurs staff, and that's when I played on the uh, FIBA team uh, with, with Pop. So he was there on the whole trip. So um, he came on this trip with us to Tokyo. So right. I spent a lot of time with him. Uh, I think the world of him. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. And especially that, you know, when you assistant coach first get they, they first head coaching mm -hmm. job, they, they hungry, you know, they, yes. they, they he, he called me all, he FaceTimed me all the time. Like he sent me stats. I can tell like, you know, he excited. And, excited. you know, as a player, that's what you want. Like somebody that's excited and, and, and ready for the season. So, um, you no. Know, I'm I'm excited for the new start. How does it feel for the organization to feel like the organization is behind you and and believing in you like the like you, the Celtics organization? You mean that big bag? Yeah. <laughs> the Brinks trucks they got that backed up yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, how how does that feel that. for for be the Celtics and the franchise that really believe in you and want to move forward in the future with you? Uh, that was that was a incredible moment. Uh, when I got that, when we came to an agreement, I, I signed that deal. Um, I, I'm like growing up. I thought about like man, I'm be a max. Like you think about all these things, but when they happen, like it, how, surreal. Yeah, you can't even explain. Just thinking about everything you'd have been through growing up, where you come from, your family, and at 22 signing a you know, $175 million contract. First million there for your family. Hold you up. know what I'm saying? Did, did, did the cameras hear that? <laughs> Tell them yeah. how old you is, not art, how old you is and what you just said. I was 22 when I when I signed it, uh, $170 million contract. And yeah. uh, then like you said, for someone to, you know, believe in you like that, someone like the Celtics who, you know, got as much history as, as any franchise ever. Um, you know, that was just, you know, I was extremely excited, you know, thankful, um, you know, happy, enjoyed it, enjoying it now. So I must ask this, you know, with that, we talking about that, it's only right that I asked my question. Cause last time you was too, you was too young. We spared you this, we didn't go there with you, but now, like you say, 175, you know what I mean? Like, I don't hear, I know, I know, I know, I know for sure you didn't took care of mama. We know that's for sure and all that. Pops, everybody straight. What did you do for yourself that was like fly, flashy, like, ooh, I just got this bag, I got to have this, and maybe a little bit of that over there. What, what, Cause the 175, that's a, whew, that's hefty. Yeah, I mean, but you gotta know yet when you when you sign your extension, you got a whole nother year yeah, before oh, you, you know, get to that check comes. So I yeah, but you you it's you'll, coming. <laughs> you waste that light money real quick. <laughs> I'm gonna get this next year. Okay. Time out, time out, time out. Don't stop me from going in. Time out, time out. <laughs> this is this is what they call a segue because what he trying to do is talk about you don't do. First of all, you 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 endorsed up, so we about to get into that. We about to talk about all of that, but you endorsed up, so you ain't gotta like take a oh I got a time out and what now, boy. You could you could right now instant gratification. You got all type of Gatorade uh, Chips, over here. You sandwiches. Got sandwiches hey, first of all, them ruffles, St. Louis uh, barbecue flaming hot. Fire, so hold man. on, let me hold it up. <laughs> For all the hood of us out there, you feel me? <laughs> you know what your Subway sandwich. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You and Draymond on the Subway commercial. But, but, but what? let's get back to the question. We're getting off the bag. What did you get? So I'm going to be honest. I've always saved all my NBA money. That's why I, you know, enjoy doing all the Ruffles, Gatorade, 2K Beats, all those commercials. <laughs> I heard that, man. Oh, yeah. Okay, J-E-W, I see y'all. Rishi out, in the game. Shout out Jeff and Rishi. You know what I'm saying? Gang, gang. Ooh. So I spend I spend that money. Yeah. I, I live off that money. And I like nice things. I, I got a couple whips. I like I like watches. Mr. Nice watch. I, I like watches. Um, you know, taking trips. 
So I that that endorsement money, you know what I'm saying? It it, it come you out my pocket. Shot right now, what you did? I mm-hmm. got a. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what you? What's hey, the look here, man. Thing, there ain't no bro, judgment in here. This is a peaceful most space. Thing I got for Christmas. Uh, I got myself the 2021 black badge. It's, it's exclusive. And there's only a few of them out there. Black badge, uh, Rolls Royce Cullinan. Ooh. Uh, Rose truck. It was always, since I was like in high school. Ready for it. Hey, I listen, he said, y- contest clues. I was, you know, real good and, and that type of stuff. He said, uh, it's only a few of them out there. <laughs> he said, black badge. I don't think I heard that reference before. That sound like some Batman type stuff. I though. heard color and I know what that is, but he threw all the other things. When you say it's only a few of them out there, that means it's like a certain number of them. Exclusive club. I, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it sounds like the George Gervin or the, the El Dorado a little bit. Black on black. <laughs> Tell me this. I want to make sure I touch it because like, how does it feel to be you? You 24, not 25 yet. 23. Tw- Hold on, man. This is really crazy. Okay, you 23. Yeah, and you just made. run off all them endorsements again one time. <laughs> just run them off for me one time. Because I want to explain something. The ones I got right now? Right now. Jordan brand, Gatorade, New Era, NBA 2K, Microsoft, <laughs> Beats, Ruffles. Um, have ridges. Emos. <laughs> I didn't see this man Emo, on donut yeah. commercials, all type of stuff. That was, yeah, that was a couple years ago. Listen, <laughs> bro. I got right there. Listen, bro. This man ain't even 25 yet. The cashed out. Like, how <laughs> do it feel? Like, for real, like, like, for you to have those type of, those are significant brands, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's already, you know what I'm saying, invested in you. I see they supporting your charity golf events and your all your efforts that you do in the community Get and stuff. Ready. Like, yeah, straight up. Like, how do it feel? To have that type of support and have that type of team that puts you in play with all of those different things, you know what I'm saying? Because that's like crazy for you not even to be 25. You well on your way to be young Shaq out here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm waiting for him to be on General yeah, or something. Stuff like, that, this stuff like that you have seen your whole life, you grew up. Yeah, like you, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Buying some of these products and now you 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 promote 2K. Them. Like, come on, bro. Like we know how you grew up on that, and now you like part of that, like all of that stuff. Yes, yeah, uh, I remember. Coming out of college, I was trying to find an agent. And, you know, Jeff, you know, just knowing what he did with Kai and, and Penny and working with Shaq and those guys. and um, J.E. Double, Jeffrey, Larry, Jeffrey yeah. Wexler. So I I got, my my pops got two other kids. I got a little brother and little sister, mm-hmm. but I grew up only child with my mom. So I remember I went to Jeff, because Jeff only had one client that was in the league at the yes, time. Yeah. So I was like, you know what I'm saying? I need a lot of attention. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Jeff, my plan is to save all my NBA money. So like, I'm, I'm fine with doing all the photo shoots, all the commercials. And it's funny cause sometimes I think about like what I was doing my rookie year and like how much I was getting paid for stuff like that. And like so now, what I'm doing now. When and Fat Joe said, the price is not the same. <laughs> price went up. All star gold medals, price The price go is up. no longer the same. Yeah, I remember Jeff telling me, he was like, you do your part and I'll do my part. Oh, you listen. Know? So listen. you take care of business on the court. You know, you don't get in trouble, do things like that. You know, it make the job a lot easier. Yeah, like that, like, listen, we've been with Jeff. Me and him both came out saying, yeah, we chose J-E-Double together and like, that was the best decision we made, period, in life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for us, he like a, a, obviously he was our agent, but he was more like a big brother type figure, mentor type figure, and put us on to different things in this, in this game and business, like, always get you right. And the thing you gotta appreciate is he gonna always tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. It's never yeah. about what you what you think you wanna hear, or whatever, he gonna keep it. You know, Jay, he gonna, and, and trust me, as loose as he, he was way more wound <laughs> tighter. We got him nice and good, <laughs> loose for you. Right. But like we did so much stuff as young boys. Well, it, that don't get nowhere to do it. He, he gonna live forever. That's look, that's just, we talking about him. He's calling, it's ladies and gentlemen. Issue. Man, listen, Deb is the greatest. Jeff is the greatest. And like I, I, I watched what he did. Like even with Kyrie, you like I put it on. Like I was like, yo, this is this is impressive. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Like y'all boys is getting to it. So that's that's dope to see. Start bench trade. Okay. So benches mean like they six men come off the bench or something. Yeah, they the first put off bench. You got to trade one. 
We ain't gonna cut them, you know. They're too good to cut, cut so we're gonna try it. Uh, mm, KD, LeBron. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How you answer that? Kobe. Huh? I'm starting. I mean, I gotta start Kobe. Okay. I got. I got Kobe jersey downstairs in my book bag. <laughs> I got Kobe tat. Uh, what, what, I mean, them like players like that never get traded. Like LeBron will never get traded. KD will never get traded. He's starting Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> we got long paws right now. I'm story code. He thinking about the, the internet clips <laughs> swirling around. I don't know. I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, me and KD, we didn't want to go metal together. <laughs> we done been through something. <laughs> we boys. <laughs> we just came off that. We done been through something. We boys. <laughs> oh, I, I can't trade neither one of them. They can come off the bench. Kobe got to start. <laughs> so he said Kobe starting and, and LeBron and, and both, KD both, both coming off the bench. I feel that. About the Kobe tattoo. What made you get a tattoo of Kobe? Uh, I I love tattoos. Um, and for me, it's like, it's a way to like express yourself. Um, I love, I love the process, you know, figuring out a tattoo, you know, going through the pain, yeah. you know, seeing it come to life. Um, you know, how, you know, it, you place it and, you know, how all the, Whatever story you trying to tell, whatever how it come together, um, and you know, somebody as you know important and influential to me as anybody, you know, rest in peace to Kobe. Uh, you know, I always knew, you know, you know after you know what happened that you know I would eventually get one. I just wanted to take some time I and that. and figure you know what I wanted to do. Um, so I got twenty four um, in a black mamba, you know, with the scales detailed. Um, going down the inside of my left knee. Uh, I seen eight and 24 play, mm -hmm. you know, but I was a little older when he was 24. So I remember that most. So that's why I picked 24. Tell me how dope is to be, you know, now that you with Jordan brand and I done seen, you know, I done hit you a couple of times like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like how dope is it for you to have that, that, to be that involved in the process and coming up with the customs, you the PEs, you Color be having, schemes, you be having yeah. some crazy stuff. I just seen you, you know, shout out to Lou, your son, all type of different things that mean something to you. Like how how dope is it to you to, you know, for you to feel like you really putting your own input and DNA and, and, and impact on your own shoe every time out? Uh, I think for me, anything that, you know, is involved in like, you know, my brand or something that I, you know, want to endorse or put out, you know, I, I want to put my all into it. You know, I, I, I love storytelling. I love having ideas and seeing them come to life. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, people like y'all too, or whether it's Twitter or I'm in a layup line and somebody from the other team, like, yo, like, let me get them, like, send me a pair. Like, that is a, like, that is a hell of a feeling. Mm -hmm. Just know, like, the, the talks that I've had with the team, and trying to figure out what shoes I want to see and then seeing them come to life and then seeing people react to them, it, it's no better feeling than that. Um, Boy, and coach, Jay Luke you know? be doing his thing. Jay, shout out Jay Luke. Mm -hmm. Jay Luke, that's so the coach. When the, when the Tatum ones come out, make sure y'all get it. I'm waiting, that's what I'm yeah. waiting for. That was my next question. When can we expect prayer, yeah. my man's own signature shoe? Cause it's definitely that time. I, I can't tell y'all exactly when, but it's on the way. Man, we appreciate you, man. We done pulled up on you in lovely we Los Angeles, view, man. man. Pulled up to the abode, you know what I'm saying? You welcome us in. We appreciate you, man. That's a wrap, man. We got the young Thundercat superstar, young Jason Tatum, Boston Celtics in the building, and St. Louis is on. Yeah, make sure you say that, bro. Please, you got to say <laughs> that. Make sure you say that. I don't get jumped. St. Louis is on, everybody. <laughs>